Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning to you and our guests here today, and good morning to you, those of you good friends worshiping with us or online. We're so glad you are here as well. Somebody went to Iceland, I heard, <laughs> and had a grand time. And she just loved the temperature of uh, 40 degrees, and she loved it and came back uh, just a few days so you, uh, I'm so glad you could do that. Heather, how are you holding up today? Just fine. It was absolutely amazing. Great. Nice travel there. Totally recommend it. All right. Glad uh, you had the wonderful time there, too. So, so on this blessed day, let us open our hearts to God and to each other in the spirit of love and joy. So we are so glad you're join, able to join us. Shall we begin with the word of prayer as we... Uh, encounter and interact with our loving God and Spirit. Let us pray. New every morning is your love, O great God of light. And all day long you are working for good in the world. Lord, stir up in us that special desire and passion to serve you, to live peacefully with our neighbors, and to devote our hearts and lives to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. So Lord, as we begin this time of worship, speak to us, O Lord. Touch us with your spirit and show us indeed your way, your truth, and your life. In Jesus' precious and mighty name we pray. Amen. The opening hymn is number 558, and you can also see uh, on the screen here as well. So let us rise, those of us who are able and willing, and stand and listen together. We are the church. Good morning. I have a few announcements. 
Our North Hunter Thrift Shop is sponsoring a trunk or treat this Saturday. So if you would like to help with that mission, uh, you can see your midweek news link and sign up for that. And then on Sunday, we're going. the Sunday School is sponsoring a Halloween community time here. Um, Faith is working very hard on that. And um, you can come and enjoy that. And that's from noon to 2 here on Sunday. And now Miss Elaine has an announcement. Guess what? It's shoebox time. Woo! <laughs> oh, okay, guys. Now, here's the deal. Our Friday uh, Bible study is leading this mission for this church's shoebox. Okay? So, no worries. No worries. We can do as many of these and we can order more. So, you know, come on. Um, Inside are the instructions. Please, please put $9 in here when you fill it because otherwise, mm, you know. So please do that. <laughs> Pick up your shoe boxes out in the social hall. Well, in the hallway. In the hallway, whatever. You'll see them. Okay, and also um, for the shoebox mission, we are expanding it this year to be a drop-off center. So, and that, that's the week before Thanksgiving, um, November 15th through the 22nd. So we're going to need a lot of hands to do that, and the social hall is going to be kind of messy for that week, but it's only one week. So um, please see your midweek news if you'd like to help in that mission. And also we are will be in need of some kind of a cart or a hand truck to get the boxes when people bring them from their car into the social hall and then after they're in cartons back out to a, the trailer. So um, if you have one to lend or if you know someone who has one to lend, that would be wonderful. Okay, I forgot one thing. I always do. Okay, here we go. These boxes are due back November 21st, okay? All right, but now, guess what? There's another announcement I've got. Our Friday Bible study today is doing the coffee hour. We are doing it in honor of one of the church's most devoted longtime servants, whose birthday happened to be yesterday, Nancy Smith. <laughs> so come have birthday cake. That's good. Hi, Nancy. 37 again, right? Good, good. Happy birthday. Um, I'd like to invite uh, Nick, uh, who has an uh, announcement or update to make in regards to our mission project. Hey, good morning, everyone. Yeah, <laughs> do it like this. So, you can, you can pull I... out. You can pull out if you want. There we go. Yeah. All right, I think this is good. All right. All right. Good morning. So I wanted to give a, a quick update on uh, the goings on at our North Hunterdon campus and uh, some of the work that the Dream Team has been doing and planning there. So as you recall, uh, just a couple weeks ago, we had a prayer service there for members of our church, and that was an opportunity to bless and commission the space for uh, some of the things to come. And to that end, I'm happy to announce that we're going to be holding our first community service uh, at North Hunterdon in the sanctuary on Saturday, November 20th. So uh, it's the Saturday before Thanksgiving. Uh, the service is going to be at 5 o'clock, and what we're planning is a meal ministry. So it'll be a time to gather together with friends for a casual dinner, and then also a time of sharing and celebrating some of the things that we're grateful for in this Thanksgiving season 
uh, that's coming upon us. So uh, as I mentioned, it's, it's going to be open to the community. We hope that uh, many of you will, will decide to attend as well. Uh, one of the things we're going to do is try to leverage some of the success that we've been having with the meal ministry that has been going on for about a year there now. Uh, normally we have that on the last Wednesday of the month, uh, but because that happens to be right before Thanksgiving, we're going to invite those that have been uh, participating in the meal ministry to come on that Saturday uh, for the month of November and come in and join us as part of that worship service. So, um, again, hope to see hope to see some of you there, and we could certainly still use some uh, a few extra hands in the in the planning uh, portion of that as we lead up to the twentieth. So, if uh, if you feel called to help out, you can see Greg or myself uh, after the service. Thanks. That's great, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nick and Greg. I'd like to invite uh, Steve Meyer, who is serving as the chair of the SPRC. He has announcements to make. Thanks, Nick. <laughs> so, so friends, this, this morning, um, I'm, I would like to share news with you that our good uh, friend and brother in Christ, uh, Pastor Brandon, as elected to retire July of uh, 2022. Mm -hmm. so, so Brandon, I really want to congratulate you on an uh, exemplary career in ministry mm -hmm. um, across the, the country and having impacts around the globe. Mm -hmm. um, so July's a long way away, so we have plenty of time to, to celebrate with you, you mm -hmm. Pastor Brandon, and mm -hmm. with Pastor Jennifer. And uh, we have a lot of work to do, oh, yeah. by the way. <laughs> so, um, but I really want to Thank you, Brandon, and I want to congratulate you. Mm -hmm. So if you please join me. Thank you. Thank you so much. The only reason I look really cool and young and dynamic is because every, every month, like yesterday, last night, Jennifer would come and says, come to the bathroom. It's time for you to dye your hair. <laughs> so she made me sit, and I went through that process. It's like a dog who never wants to take bath, remember? Yeah, it's the same thing. So I just grumble and go in and do that anyways. So we still have a good, probably about eight months to enjoy each other. Let's make the best run out of this. Is that good? And uh, we will continue to develop uh, new ministries and, and engage in this transformational mission and work that we do. So... Uh, we'll, we'll enjoy our time together. But fair to, this was a good time to at least let you guys know. And uh, uh, God is good, and we'll continue to work with that. Is that all right? Good. Thank you. Thank you, Steve, so much, and all the SPRC members for your loving support and everything. Okay. With that note, there's faith. All the short people that come after me, the microphone is in proper position. All right. Today we're going to sing a song for children's time called Our God is So Great. So you're going to need your hands and just one foot to sing this song. It goes, my God is so great, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so great, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are his, the rivers are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so great, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. He made the trees. He made the seas. He made the elephants, too. <laughs> My God is so great, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. All right, now all the kids can come downstairs for Sunday school.
Thank you, choir, so much. Appreciate it. Now it's the time for us to enjoy a, a bit of a spiritual kind of empowerment and uh, uh, re-energizing kind of process through prayer. Uh, the praying church is the vital church of God, and we believe in the power of prayer. And uh, many of you, I know, you have your own personal prayer needs that you want to bring in different forms and shapes and colors. But God is ready to hear our prayers, and God will respond. Even if God says no, that's God's grace right there. So in that, with that in mind, I invite us to share some of our joys or prayer needs. Oh, I'm sorry, I need to get you the microphone. Thank you, Beth. There's one there. I think we all need to pray for Jane Trees. Mm -hmm. and her family right. on the sudden death of her brother. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Jane is joining up with her family in Midwest right now. I think it's Illinois, Maroon, Illinois, I think. Anyhow, they're having a funeral service for uh, Jay. I think that's what they call him. And uh, if you can keep them in your thoughts and prayers, that would be great, especially for her traveling mercies. Mm -hmm. So we'll say, Lord, in your mercy... Hear our prayers. Great. Anyone else? My brother in Florida had his uh, pacemaker put in on Thursday, and he did well, and prayers for his recovery. You bet. Uh, for God's ongoing uh, renewal of the mind, body, and the spirit, and healing touch, we'll say, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. While we're at it, same subject matter. Kelly, how you doing? Are you walking good? with a walker. All right. Uh, she had uh, important knee surgery, and uh, she came out beautifully with that. With how many st the staples? Ooh, that's 30 ouches right there. All right. But I'm glad you're doing well, and we'll continue to lift you up in our thoughts and prayers. You can point out who you want for dinner tonight. Okay. Let me know. I'll get it for you. So with that note, for your sister, for God's love, blessing, and healing, and complete wholeness again. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayers. Mom, give your daughter a hug. Go ahead. She's been awesome. All right, wonderful. That's great. And then here we go. Yes. It's a joy to see all of the new faces here today. Bless you. Thank you for coming. Okay. Let's welcome them. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Great. Uh, Mary Jane, Colin, and I have been in conversation a little bit, and uh, she's down south of, uh, of our state to, hook, to get together with her family to celebrate her dad's birthday in heaven. So 
just want you to remember Mary Jane and she and I have been talking over the uh, you know, e emails and back and forth. So for Mary Jane and her family, for God's comfort and assurance, and we'll say, Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayers. Thank you. Anyone else? Now, Greg and Beth, I got something here. Oh, let's go this one first. Uh, God has given me some therapy. Uh, he has me substitute teaching in Spanish. <laughs> and I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> so I need lots of prayers. Please. I think what she's saying is she needs the, the same miracle the early church had. <laughs> Acts 2. Okay. Yeah, okay. Carol, may God give you the speaking in tongue gift or what have you, but you got the right color outfit. That's a beautiful color, and uh, so thank you for your ministry. All right, for that, we'll say, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Okay, anyone else? Uh, last week, I asked for prayers for our friend Annie, who was having uh, hip surgery, and I'm here to report that she is doing great, and she's in physical therapy mm. for this week and Walter so thanks okay. for the prayers Thank and you. continue prayers for her healing sure for the prayers of healing and wholeness we we'll say Lord in your mercy hear our prayers oh there you go there's another so my mom celebrated her 92nd birthday yesterday and had the blessing that her granddaughter was here on Monday from Indiana and then my nephew came in for a few days for the first time in two years and just went from today. So it was an awesome week for her. Nice. Happy birthday to your mom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Along that line, I'm going to take on you. My mom's birthday was yesterday. Oh. And so we had a face, you know, face time and a talk. Uh, Jennifer and I sang our very best uh, birthday song to her twice. She won it <laughs> twice. So we gave her that. But... Uh, so I liked her. She's 86, I think. Wow. But she's going strong. And so I would like to have us remember her. Mom, you'll probably watch me talking here in service because <laughs> my sister Jeannie is trying to figure out how to get you to see this. So, Mom, love you. Okay. <laughs> Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. So here's a fun one. I just received this note, read it this morning, actually, on my desk. Dear Pastor Cho, please accept this gift uh, to your church in honor of Beth and Greg Crawford's 30th wedding anniversary on October the 26th. That's Tuesday this week. We would like the gift to be applied to whatever ministry Beth and Greg choose. We look forward to attending your service next time. We are in New, New Jersey. Denise and Walter Crawford. So I got a check. Why do I have the feeling that that check will go right to your feeding ministry? <laughs> I was going to use that money to take it out to dinner or something, but I don't think that's going to happen. So, but we want to really surround you with our deep love and appreciation and celebration as well. So have a good uh, getaway time, the two of you. Number 30, that's a good number. Go for the next 30 as well. All right? Is that a good deal? So to our beloved friends here, may the Lord bless them. So in the name of our Lord Jesus, in your mercy, O oh Lord, your hear our prayers. prayers. God bless. Have a good time. Anyone else? Okay, with that note, let us now go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Now, after uh, I pray, Lord, in your mercy, I invite you to repeat like you just did today. Hear our prayers. Our most gracious and generous God, we come here today in fellowship with one another and setting aside this time purely for you, O Lord, to offer you praise and thanksgiving and worship, to hear you to speak to us and to live here shaped a little bit more into the likeness of Jesus Christ. So we come humbly, O Lord, and quietly before you praying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. O God, we thank you for those times this week where we smiled and laughed, those times of friendship enjoyed, of meals shared, those times when we appreciated the beauty of your creation, when we felt a deep peace in our hearts, when we paused to be grateful for the life you have given us. And for all of these and much more, we know that we are blessed 
And in gratitude and joy, we pray, Lord, in your mercy, for our days of difficulty and struggle, for the times when we have been less than our best, we give you thanks that you do not turn away from us and that we are never alone. Your, speaking, your living word tells us that when we confess our sins, you are gracious and just to forgive us and help us start anew. And so we pause in silence to personally confess our sins to you now. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we lift to you our church. We love it here. We love our friends here. We want to build up a strong and vital part of our community. We want to be used by your Lord to make a difference in the lives of many. The need for hope, acceptance, love, and compassion is great. And you are the answer to these needs. Help us, O oh Lord, to show others the way to you through our mission and ministries, and most of all, through our lives and example. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We lift to you our country and its leaders. We thank you that we are living in a free democratic world, and we pray now for change, for the good. We pray that egos and power plays will be set aside in Washington, D.C., and that wisdom, vision, and collaboration will be the order of the day. Your guidance is sorely needed, O oh Lord. So, Lord, we pray, Lord, in your mercy. Lord, for those who are sick, suffering, lonely, misguided, or just in need of your presence and friendship, we ask that you would touch them with your healing, with your guidance, and with your grace. You have those on our prayer list, for, but hear us now as we, as we pray for one another and lift up the names of those for whom we ask your blessings upon. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, for the confidence and joy of, and the hope we have because we walk daily with you, we give you thanks and praise. In the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Lord, hear our prayers. As we humbly offer you the prayer Jesus taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's scripture reading is Ephesians 2, 11 through 18. So then remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made by the flesh, in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of prophet, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall that is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself. One new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near, for through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Thank you, Carol, very much. Let us pray. Loving God, please use this humble servant's mouth to proclaim your good news to your people. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to talk about bridge builders uh, today, and a specific sub-theme has to do with breaking down barriers. I ran into this story, and it has a lot of good meaning to me, so I would like to share this illustration. One day, a young Buddhist on his journey home came to the bank of this particular river, which was kind of large, wide river. We're staring at it hopelessly because there's a great obstacle in front of him. He pondered for hours on just how he could possibly cross such a wide barrier across the river. As he was just about to give up his pursuit to continue his journey here, he saw a, a great teacher on the other side of the river. The young Buddhist yells to, uh, over to the teacher this way, Oh, wise man, wise man, teacher, can you tell me how to get to the other side of this river? The teacher ponders for a moment, looks up and down the river, and yells back this way, My son, you are on the other side. No help. There's no help there. So the teacher was trying to change the young man's perspective because each one looking at the other side. How do you cross the river through these barriers of life? That's something you and I like to talk about. Is that good? Let's reflect on it. This is actually my favorite subject. And uh, you'll see how your pastor is going to run with this thing. So let's go for it. Pray for me. So question. When you think of bridge builders in our communities and around the world, who comes to your mind or oh, organization or group? When you think of a person who is able to break down the barriers and building bridges across, who comes to your mind today? Can you think of anyone? There seems to be constant conflict around us. Quite frankly, I'm getting tired of watching all this TV news these days. CNN, Fox, I watch everything. I'm a pretty inclusive guy in this department. But man, I said, you guys really need Jesus in your hearts. That's what I wanted to say. But actually, the conflict is around us in our personal lives, maybe within our own selves right here, yeah? what I call severe war in our hearts. Or it can be a local uh, community, national, or global nature. In our world of con a perpetual conflict, we who follow Jesus are called to reconnect with people uh, or connect them together with greater understanding and compassion. Indeed, in our divided and troubled world, we need more people who are building bridges among different groups and individuals who are breaking down barriers. As followers of Jesus, that's you and I, we're called on to mimic our Lord. In other words, imitate Jesus and be bridge builders in the spirit of peace reconciliation, and love. We learn that being a bridge builder by breaking down barriers is not just doing activities uh, that promote maybe less conflict, so-called lower the temperature, so to speak, but we need to do more than that. It's more about putting our trust and whole source of worth and significance in just a one single person who is peace. That's our Lord Jesus. Now, in Ephesians 2, uh, Paul is teaching that in reality, Christ has already torn down all the walls of hostility between God and us, but also all of, among all of us. He tore down everything that divides us as humans. In the first century, Jerusalem had the major dividing wall between Jews and Gentiles. And Paul is saying that by means of the cross, Christ has created a new reality. I would like to dare to call this the new normal, as we hear about. So, 
this is a, a, a new reality is really what I would label as a reconciled humanity. Reconciled humanity. From this perspective of our Lord, this is all past tense. It's already been accomplished by Jesus. We need to just receive it and follow that pathway. In God's reality, friends, Jesus Christ is the only hope for the world, I dare to say. Jesus did not just do peaceful things. He's actually peace itself. In reality, Jesus is already the peace between all conflicting parties and individuals or nations. The most anyone can do without Christ is to bring about a temporary cease of conflicts. Just like uh, between the two Koreas the, uh, under the DMZ, they are still at war between these countries, but they are agreeing to cease shooting at each other, but still is still in a time of war, even now. So here we are. The, to have true peace with a deep sense of well-being and reconciliation, Jesus must be involved. We need to let Jesus get involved, interfere, and disrupt and everything else inside of us and renew us again. That's what needs to be done. This is so true for uh, law enforcement officers, politicians, and anyone else promise, promising to bring peace. They may have well intentions behind what they say, but without Christ, there's no shalom. There's no salam. So here's my big question for us. How does this work? How did Jesus break down these worlds? So I invite us to go ahead and reread again Ephesians 2, 13 through 18. You're still on the screen. And I invite us to read a little bit slower, uh, and maybe you can read it with a little bit of a, uh, maybe a prayerful attitude about it. So let's read it together. Are we here? Good. Thank you, Erica and Eric. Let's read it. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall. That is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death the hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were fall off and peace to those who are near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. Sounds like a lot of networking going on here. A lot of connecting going on. I have a nickname for this passage. Can I share that with you? You remember this. Christ is inviting all of us to enter into a different culture. It's called cross-culture. I use the phrase because I'm a cross-cultural pastor, you know. I walked away from my Hawaii. People don't understand why I did that dumb thing. But I walked away from my home state following the call. Here I am. I'm serving with you now. That's great. Maybe God has a good sense of humor about all this. But by having me as your pastor here for three years now, we're doing this wonderful work called the cross-culture. It's not just crossing over to another culture. Cross-culture means Christ-centered values and affirmations and faith confessions and action. That's what we are doing. You're cross-cultural like me in that regard. So that's the name for this passage. But what kind of image do you draw out of it besides that? I see a culture. Friends, how do you understand culture? There are external culture elements and internal, and there's an iceberg we looked at, and we only see the tip of the iceberg thinking that's everything about the other person and his or her culture, but underneath there's a lot greater volume of things which we do not yet understand. 
but need to learn what that means, right? So culture has a different components to that. Humans being limited creatures create boundaries around themselves. We call these boundaries culture. Our church has its own culture, you know. I've been observing you folks, how you talk, how you process. It was a lot of fun, me just watching you act. And then I interject my own craziness into the mix, and we're having a grand time, laughing together in the name of Jesus, together here. So that's how we grow, telling each other the wonderful stories of everyone's life's journey. And that's what we need to do. Well, here in culture, uh, I must say culture is good, and sometimes it's necessary because the human must have some kind of a concrete understanding and a guide, guidance to exist. So we're using such as language, rules of engagement, common stories, uh, common food, common customs, shared values around all kinds of subjects and so on. We, the United Methodists, we have an interesting culture as expressed in, through, you laugh about it, um, has to do with food. We love to share that food. Yeah, everybody loves it. Uh, chicken casserole <laughs> and more. That's our United Methodist culture. Food is an important part. So when we go to heaven, I suspect that good Lord Jesus might assign us to have our residence next to the kitchen. And I'll go for that one, all right? Anyways, um, in Paul's letter, he's referring specifically to the Jewish culture now. Uh, they had particular laws about food, about their bodies and, and behaviors. If a person uh, ate certain things, or if a person was uncircumcised, then that person was considered unclean, and they were not allowed to go near that person. There's excommunication taking place. In the Jewish mind, the Greeks were unclean and out of bounds. So whenever two cultures come in contact with each other, the natural tendency is to withdraw deeper into the boundaries, going back to our comfort zones. That's a lot of people do. Am I, are you with me on this? And then what they do is they make them stronger, firm. These boundaries can then become isolating prison cells and walls of hostility when they become rigid and self-elevating, pitting one culture as superior to another. I see a lot of people in our country who are suffering from what I call superiority complex. And I look at them. I watch them. That's that attitude there that I see happening. And it just spills over into all, everything in you know, social life and political life of our nation. How about interjecting a little bit of humility into that mix? I wonder. I wondered what that all looked like. When you multiply these times of all the thousands of cultures around the world that exist, it looks like the jumbled mess we have. So how do we go from here? So let's bring God into this equation and look at verse 18 again. It says, Paul says, For through him, meaning Jesus, both of us, that's the different cultures, have access in one spirit to the Father. So culture, when seen as a bounded set, isolates and kills the flow of life. Life has to be shared. We're social animals. That's how God has wired us up to, to, to live. We need each other. But how do we do that? Sometimes culture can be the stumbling block from doing that. The spirit is coming from different places in each path, but is drawing all things to the same purpose. Purposes, that is self-transcending love of God for all things. And this life flow is the essence of God as you study deeper. Sorry, I'm being a little bit more theological today than usual. Now, friends, important reminder is that we are the body of Christ. 
there are many cultural boundaries within the church. The question that we as the church have to ask is the following. And Erica is going to uh, share that with you. First question, what are the things in our faith that are cultural, that draw boundaries around us and keep others away, others out? Second question, how is the Spirit moving us to follow Jesus, to move beyond these boundaries into the sacred places of the cross? In other words, how can we embrace this cross-culture that Brandon is talking about? No matter what type of conflict we're in, the goal is to mimic our Lord, who brought peace in an incarnational way. We are to have the same mindset as Christ, who didn't cling to the advantages he has as God, but rather emptied himself of everything except perfect love. There are several ways in which we can learn from our Lord's example here, and I'll make three very brief uh, introductions to you. So you may want to consider maybe applying this in your daily walk with God. The first is this. Make sure that our identity is anchored in Jesus Christ. All of our worth and significance comes from what God thinks about us and has spoken over us by his actions on the cross. I don't need to look good. I don't need to be right. I don't have to win anything. My life in Christ is in Christ and nothing else really matters. We shouldn't wait for conflict to start practicing this discipline. Just anchor yourselves in the person and the spirit of Jesus. That's the ultimate source of who you are and whose you are. That we need. This is what I mean by cross-culture. Are you catching it? The secondly, we remember that those we are in conflict with have unsurpassable worth, and Jesus died for them on the cross as well. Our first job as a kingdom person is to agree with Jesus that they were worthy of him, Jesus, giving up his life for. Communicating others' worth is always more important than winning the argument or decision. This applies in God's church, in the community, and other organizations. Lastly, in order to be peacemakers, or bridge builders, we need to listen and validate. It's not agreeing with another position, but rather respecting another person's right to have a different perspective. Do you know why I love to be a United Methodist? Because we believe in diversity, the diversity of different opinions and perspectives and commitments and, and uh, everything else. But we coexist. United Methodist Church as a whole, we have a huge tent. It's a big tent where everybody can belong. And everybody has total access to God's grace. You have your unique voices and commitments and positions. That's great. Therefore, we are not like a, a, a bishop calling everybody saying, this is the way you have to believe. We don't say that. But we listen to each other with a great deal of openness and understanding and grow together out of that. That kind of conversations will take place here in our church this year in different uh, subject matters. And I invite you to remember, you and I, we need to listen and validate. We can't listen and validate if we are constantly trying to be right, to put together what we are going to say next in the conflict. We need to stop the chatter in our brains and start listening. I think that's very good. Eventually, this practice will help us to listen to God's voice more clearly. We need to do that. So, after all, Jesus did not agree with a lot of behaviors of the people around him, but he validated them, valued them, and trying to understand them, how they could 
get to where they are now in terms of life experience. Then through his love, he helped to bring them out of that way of life. So I'm inviting you to get out of your comfort zones and start interacting. That's very important. So today, we are called to imitate Christ in our hearts and in our lives and relationships. United in Christ, let us strive to be God's barrier breakers and then be bridge builders in the name of Christ. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your many blessings, your many gifts, and we give these gifts to you to, for use in working with your church. Help us to build bridges that we may improve the relationship with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for staying standing. Please join us as we sing All My Hope.
maybe you might want to consider turning this meeting into our revival meeting now. I don't know. That's great. But thank you so very much. I love that. That's great. That's great. Thank you so much. So friends who are watching on your TV screen or computer screen, we're so glad you could join us today. Have a wonderful afternoon and enjoy the rest of your journey. And join us anytime uh, via online or in person. We just love this whole idea of connecting with you. And may you have a terrific, blessed week. Same blessing goes to you, my brothers and sisters. Thank you for being who you are. Thank you for being open to the leading of the Spirit to be the agent of love for all God's people. Go ahead and start building bridges, breaking down the walls of hostility, whatever they might be. Be the agents of peace, shalom today and every day. So go in God's peace, God's love, and God's joy in the name of our God, the creator, redeemer, and of course, sustainer. Amen.